Outgoing NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg urged member states to uphold the alliance's founding values in a speech reflecting on his 10-year tenure on Thursday. NATO prevailed during the Cold War, not least because we believe in open economies and competition between our countries. And remember that in Article 2 of our founding treaty, the Washington Treaty, it is stated clearly that we should encourage each other to strengthen our economic collaboration between allies. So let us take this commitment seriously, he said. Stoltenberg added that the nation-building project in Afghanistan had been too ambitious, and that the swift collapse of the Afghan government demonstrated that withdrawing was the correct choice. NATO will welcome former Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte as its new Secretary General on October 1. We have to be willing to pay the price for peace. The more money, the stronger our defenses, the more effective our deterrence, the greater our security. Since 2014, spending across the alliance has gone up substantially. All NATO allies now invest at least 2% of GDP in defense or have plans to get there soon. Is that freedom is more important than free trade. Not so long ago, many allies believed that buying gas from Russia was purely a commercial matter. That was wrong. Russia used gas as a weapon to try to coerce us and to prevent us from supporting Ukraine. We must not make the same mistake with China. Depending on Chinese rare, rare earth minerals, exporting advanced technologies, and allowing foreign control of a critical infrastructure weakens our resilience and creates risks. NATO prevailed during the Cold War not least because we believed in open economies and competition between our countries. And remember that in Article 2 of our founding treaty, the Washington Treaty, it is stated clearly that we should encourage each other to strengthen our economic collaboration between allies. So let's take this commitment seriously Protectionism against allies does not protect our security. Military strength is a prerequisite for dialogue. I know this from my time as Prime Minister of Norway. We have to speak to our neighbors, however difficult it might be. But dialogue only works when it's backed by strong defenses. Today, President Putin believes he can achieve his goals on the battlefield. And he believes that he can wait us out. That is why he continues to wage his brutal war. <clears throat> I do not believe that we can change Putin's mind. But I do believe that we can change his calculus. By giving Ukraine more weapons, we can make Putin realize he cannot get what he wants by force. And make it so costly that he will have to accept Ukraine has a sovereign democratic right to persist as a sovereign democratic nation. The Afghanistan mission lasted too long. When I arrived, at NATO in 2014, the plan was to end our military presence in a couple of years and transition to a political partnership. But seven years later, we were still there with thousands of troops. What started as a focused counter-terrorism operation became a large-scale nation-building mission. 
a democratic and united Afghanistan with equal rights for all was a worthy goal. But it was too ambitious. We saw the cost of mission group. After 20 years, we were still not winning the war. The Taliban were gaining ground. And there were no united Afghan authorities that could take responsibility when we left. The fact that the Afghan government <clears throat> and the security forces collapsed so quickly demonstrated why it was right to leave. We must never take the bond between Europe and North America for granted. NATO is not written in stone. It is the result of deliberate choices and political will. We have heard voices on both sides of the Atlantic calling for America and Europe to part ways. Focusing on short-sighted national interests over longer-term cooperation will not serve us well. Isolationism will not keep anyone safe. 